Let's program and be creative. It's time for MIT App Inventor. In this video, we're going to continue our path in the Animal Park app, and we're going to work on porting app. So let's just see what it looks like. I'm going to do Connect Emulator. Now for this app, you're going to actually have to test the app on your phone or tablet. I'm going to show you what it looks like, and I'll show you why you need to test it in your phone or your tablet, and not in the emulator. Welcome to Jamie's Amazing Animal Park app. So remember, using the emulator, the sound might be a little bit slow, the text might be a little bit slow. That's one of the downfalls of using the emulator. If you use it on a phone, it will not be like very slow speaking or the sound. So we did hear animal sounds in the previous video. We're going to go over this, recording animals. Let's record some amazing animal videos and sounds. Record your animal video or sounds below. So you can see we have the screen, we have a home button at the top, record your animal video or sounds below. We have a button to record video of our animals that are walking. If you're walking in our amazing animal park, you can record some video of our animals that are in our imaginary park. Um, and also if you want to record some sounds, so say you're doing a night walk and we have different animal sounds that we can hear, you might can record those to kind of have those. So we have these two buttons. Then we have a play, a stop, and a pause button. That goes along with our record sounds. So when we actually record video, you can see this is why we need to use our actual phone or tablet. This is not gonna work on the emulator. This is what you're gonna see happen. So I'm gonna press record. It's supposedly recording this, which it's actually not doing. It's just showing you an example of what it could record. And I'm gonna press stop and press approve. You can see the camcorder did not record the clip. That's because this is the emulator. But if you do it on a phone or tablet, you will see that it actually does work. Same thing if I do for record audio, if I click on this, you can see it currently says stop. Now, if I press this, it says an unexpected occurred while recording sound. Again, it's not recording the sound in the emulator, but you can see the play, stop, and pause button show up. If I press these, play. it's not actually gonna play the sound because the sound did not get recorded. So again, for this tutorial, you will need to test this part of our Animal Park app recording a video or a sound on an actual phone or a tablet. Well, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna close that and go over to our Animal Park app. So this is where we left off. And the first thing we need is a button. We have here animal sounds and we have an animal sound screen. So we, we're gonna have record animals and we're gonna have a record animal screen. So the first part we're gonna to need to do is add a button. I come over here to user interface, drag in my button, and I'm gonna do BTN chord animal. I'm gonna match it up with the style that I did in the previous video. So the background color is yellow. My text is going to say chord animals. I'm gonna make the text color here blue, bold. I'm gonna make my shape rounded. And let's see, this is 16. So I'm gonna come down here and change my font size to 16. So again, that's pretty much how you design inside of App Inventor. You're going to drag things from the palette, components, different components you need to your screen. You will rename them in the component window, and then you will update the properties to make it look like you want. So that's all we need to actually design the home screen, add our simple button, record animals. Now we need to code this when we click on it. But before we do that, let's connect our emulator. Again, I know I just said you're not going to be able to test your app in the emulator, but we can build it out alongside the emulator for now. And then we're ready and done with our code. We will actually deploy it on a device and test that it actually works recording sound and recording video. So let's go ahead and connect our emulator so we can just see, I'm gonna do reset connection, emulator. So there we go. We kind of have our app and you can see something here that I don't like. And that's why I suggest you always see what you added. Once you add some stuff, make sure that you visualize it either on the phone or the emulator to see if that's exactly what you want. There's a space between here and you can see there's not a space between here where I actually want a space. Well, how can I do that? Well, in the previous video, I showed you how to do that here. If I go to animal sounds, 
See, there is a space in between here. But there's also a little space in between here. And if you look at this first one, horizontal arrangement, I have my image lion. I have a label called space here one. I emptied out the text here and I made the width the size that I want that space to be. And then I have the image called Cobra. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing, my little label spacer trick to provide spacing. So I'm gonna go back to screen one and I'm gonna go to label, I'm gonna drag a label in between. I'm gonna rename it LBL spacer one. And I'm gonna delete the text. And I don't want width this time. I actually want the height. So I'm gonna do height and let's make it two pixels just to see how that looks. And you can see, I kind of like that. So two pixels works for me. So now if I click on here animals, it goes to here animals. If I click on record animals, it doesn't do anything. So what should we do? Well, we need to code it. Let's go ahead and click on blocks. And here we're going to look very similar to BTN animals for BT animal sounds. When someone clicks the animal sounds, we say, let's hear some amazing animal sound. And then we go to the animal sound screen. So for our BTN record animals, I'm going to come click on that. I'm going to pull out this BTN record animals. Let's add in our comments, right click, do add comment. One, we're going to speak to the user and two, we're going to go to the animal record screen. And this home screen is going to be very similar for all of the for this entire app. So remember we talked about do not repeat yourself, the drive principle in computer science. So if I'm gonna be doing this for the entire app, I probably should make a procedure. That way if I ever wanted to add more stuff to it, then I can add it in one location versus the other. So, so this is how it would look. I would speak to the user and then I would go to that screen. Well, these two look very similar. Um, I could leave it like this, or I could make a procedure. And that way, if I make it in one location, I can add extra functionality to the one location in it always. So let's do that. Let's practice creating procedures because that's what you're going to need to do on the AP Computer Science Principles Creative Performance Task Exam. To create a procedure, we're gonna click on Procedures over here. We're gonna pull out this first block there's two types of procedures. One where it's self-contained, all the work is done inside of this block. This one is where it's re returning a result. So I'll calculate something and return it to use later. We just want to pull out the self, the independent block. So I'm gonna call this procedure, go to screen. Now inside of here, I want to know which screen I wanna to go to. Do I wanna to go to animal sounds or do I wanna to go to, this should be animal record. Well, I need to pass which screen to this procedure so I know which screen to go to. So again, anytime in AppRevenue you see this little blue settings icon, you can click on that and it provides you to modify that block. On the left side, I can see I have input. I'm gonna select that and pull it over. And then here, I'm gonna type screen name. So now this procedure requires you to pass the screen name it wants to go to. So I'm going to disable this block, disable this block, just to show you for now, and add in, whenever you make a procedure, go back to procedures, and you will see that procedure show up. I'm gonna pull this and put it inside of there. And I'm gonna pull this, put it inside of here. So now, go to screen, and I need to give it the screen name. Well, that screen name is Animal Record. Same thing here, if, the, if I click on button Animal Sounds, I wanna go to my animal sounds. So now this gets passed to this procedure, but I'm not doing anything inside of this procedure. So what should I do here? I wanted to do what I was doing before. Open another screen with the screen name with whatever screen name actually gets passed in. So I'm gonna pull this and put that here. I'm gonna enable this one. And now where do I get the screen name? So for example, go to screen, it's passing animal sounds here. Well, when it gets passed here, it's now called this, screen name. You can't click on this. If you click on it, it thinks you wanna rename it. Just mouse over it and you can actually grab this. Or if you want to variables over here and you pull out the get block and you change this, 
it'll just automatically. So I did it both ways. I can mouse over this and I can get her set. I'm gonna get whatever screen name comes in and that's going to go to that screen name. So if I call go to screen with screen name animal record, animal record comes here and it tries to go to that screen. If I call it with animal sounds and I pass an animal sound screen, it's gonna come here and it's gonna to try to go to that screen. The other thing I would do is talk. So it says something different for animal sounds versus animal record. Well, I don't have to just have one input. I can actually have two. So I'm gonna click on settings again, another input. And here I'm gonna say message to say. And you can see when I added the input here, now it's saying, hey, you gotta give me something here so I can say it. And the same thing happened down here. Well, for message to say, it's gonna be this block right here. So I'm just gonna pull this up so that goes to the bottom. And let's disable this block right now. Do the same over here. And I'm gonna disable this. And I actually can get rid of this one at the bottom. I don't need that one anymore. Open another screen. So I wanna speak and I'm gonna to go to my text speech. I'm gonna pull in speak. And the message that I wanna say is right here, whatever is passed in. So let's actually comment this because this is going to be the exact same thing as this over here now. And this is going to speak to the user using message to say, which was passed in, which is it's actually called a parameter, which is input and go to screen with screen name, which is also a parameter. So now, this looked similar to what we used to have, but I'm missing this. So what do I want to say when someone touches animal sounds? I want to say that, and I can get rid of this. And what I want to say when someone touches animal record, I'm going to say this, and get rid of this. So again, we've made one procedure that's going to handle the work for going to any screen. Since we're going to have a bunch of screens, we put it all in one location, and now we're just passing in the stuff we need to go to those screens. I'm passing in the screen name, I'm passing in the message I wanna say. When someone touches BT and animal sounds, it's gonna pass in the screen name called animal sounds, which we do have, and it's going to say, let's hear some amazing animal sounds. When someone touches BT and record animals, it's gonna pass in the screen name animal record, and it's going to pass in the message, let's record some animal sounds and videos and everything should work. But there is one error. Did you catch the error? Let's see. Let's just test animal sounds. If I click on animal sounds, let's see. Let's hear some amazing animal sounds. So animal sounds works. I'm gonna go back home. Back to home. Welcome to JD Dance Amazing Animal Park app. Now, let's click on record animals and see what happens. Let's record some animal sounds and videos. So it says let's record some animal sounds and videos, but it gives me this invalid screen, animal cord, runtime error. What is happening? Well, if we think about it, do we have an animal record screen? Well, let's see. I have a screen one and I have animal sounds. We actually did not create animal cord. So again, that's why you're getting this error. Let's record some animal sounds and videos. Invalid screen, animal record. That screen does not actually exist. We need to make it. So let's close that. I'm gonna copy that so it's spelled exactly the same. And click on add a screen, paste it in, and we click okay. So everything vanished. Well, actually no. You can see I'm on a new screen called animal record. So now I have three screens. So let's go back to screen one. Welcome to Jamie Kent's Amazing Animal Park app. Now, if I click on record animals. Let's record some animal sounds and videos. It actually takes me to that screen. Now here's something that I wanna do. I wanna stop the background music whenever I go to another screen. So I'm gonna go back to screen one. Welcome to Jamie Kent's Amazing Animal Park app. So you can see when my screen launches, when I open up the screen, I start playing this background music. But when I go to another screen, I actually wanna stop playing this background music. 
So over here and go to screen, I'm going to make number two stop the background music and I'll make number three go to the screen. So that's another reason why making procedures are effective and efficient. Remember, I could have these two blocks inside of here and here, but now if I want to stop the background music, I have to add it to both this block and this block versus adding it in one location. So making procedures, whenever you see the same code, you always want to practice the dry principle. Dry is do not repeat yourself and make a procedure. So now just to stop the background music, I'm going to hit this, I'm pull in my stop, and there you go. Let's test it. Let's test it for here some animals. I'm hearing the background music when I press this. Let's hear some amazing animal sounds. You can see it stops, but if you look at this screen, I start the background music again. So you don't get confused. This screen is starting it over. Now let's go back to home. Back to home. Welcome to Jamie Dance Amazing Animal Park app. Now when I click on record animals, let's see what happens. Does the music stop? Let's record some animal sounds and videos. And you can see it actually stopped. And that's because I have not launched the background music on this screen. And we're actually not gonna have background music on the screen because you're recording video in sound. Why would we have background music which would get recorded on the screen while you're doing that? So with this video, we are done with the home screen. In the next video, we will actually design out our animal record screen.